Cheers. Saturday night. Let's take a look at one method of finding old historic abandoned mines in Ontario. There's multiple ways of doing it, multiple databases you go to, but here's one that I find really nice. There's something out there. So probably the easiest way to get in is do a Google search on OGS Oscar George Simon Space Earth. OGS Earth. And that'll bring you to the Ministry of Northern Development and Mines. And let's go there. Bing de bang de boom. Really neat space. There is a lot of information here, including mining claims, geology, all sorts of stuff that is kind of important. But what we're going to talk about is further down. And I'm going to be talking about um, abandoned mines, which is the AMIS, Amos database. But if you take a look, there's other things that you could spend a lot of time here. Bedrock geology, drill hole results. Um, there is one on mineral deposits, just on, on occurrences. Now what I will warn you is, depending on your internet speed, do not load up both mineral occurrences and abandoned mines into the same layers that you have loaded into your mapping database. It will overwhelm it and it will just make things horribly slow. Something else that's really cool, cars. Oh, those are caves. Um, lots of stuff here for the prospector or, like me, just a rock hound. Now, what I won't be walking you through is on mining claims, whether or not the spot when you found it actually belongs to somebody. That you should do on your own. And then to get in, to make this really quick, is you're going to have to load up Google Earth or Google Earth Pro. I use Google Earth Pro. It seems to work really well and has some additional features. Both are free, so you don't have to worry about you know paying for something. Everything I'm showing you is free to use. Just got to figure out how to, how to get in and how to get it. So there is a Google Earth tutorial you can just click on and it'll walk you through what you need to do. It will give you the information on what you need to download to get the layer on Google Earth. In other words, to get the database information posted over Google Earth. So in summary, you're going to need Google Earth on your computer. So download Google Earth or Google Earth Pro. You can find it by clicking on the links here or just do a Google search and it'll come up. Follow the steps and the final step is after you delete the cache in Google Earth to uh, download the KML. And the KML, just for your information, that we'll be talking about is this one, Abandoned Mines or Amos. And you just click on the download button. It'll give you the most current information they do keep it current and let's go there now there's something out there <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh who goes there oh. <laughs> okay assuming that you had Google Earth loaded and the database layered on top it's now time to open up Google Earth. And there we go. It's such a cool program. Gotta kind of know you where you are so you can zero in on your site. 
this won't be an instruction video on how to use Google Earth but look at that look at all the mines in, in Ontario especially southern Ontario let's zoom in even further zoom 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 and where are we there we go let me zoom in a bit further okay so every one of these dots is another abandoned mine and a spot that's been very popular this year for rock hounders is Torrey Hill so this will be highway 118 that cuts across this is the road that takes you up to Essenville and this one up this way towards Bancroft and what else is over there Wilberforce, how about that? Wilberforce is a bit closer. Hmm. Lovely. <laughs> Let's take a look. If we really know Torrey Hill, where people have been going is up what was called Gibson Road. And lo and behold, there's actually more than one abandoned mine. Now what you can do is click on any one of these circles you can see it just highlights when you run your mouse over it and you can see what was there in the records so I just clicked on it and that came up actually with three different things when you're searching a site what I tend to do is click on the yellow ones because they seem to have more information but if you're going to go into a site, you know, once you zeroed it down and said to yourself, this is one I want to know more about, click on them all. But we'll click on the yellow one today. All right. So look what this tells me. It's got the name of the mine, the aliases. In other words, a lot of mines have more than one name. So this one was called the Miller's Mine, or the Miller's Phosphate Mine, or Gibson Road. Huh, Gibson Road Occurrence, maybe. We'll come back to this, what's in blue. Anything that comes up in blue is something else that's clickable, and we'll do that in a second. Um, they were mining phosphate, so what do you want to bet? They were looking for appetite sometimes you have to read between the lines but what's good to know here is they had a trench and an audit hmm somewhere there is an audit haven't seen that in any of the videos yet <laughs> and of course it tells the township it does have information on The other, the old way of classifying mines, which is the MIDI number. But let's click on what is blue so we can zero in. Boom. So there we go. Deposit names Miller's Phosphate from 1900, the Harper Prospect. And in 1993, the Carr Quirk Mellish Occurrence, 1967. Huh. All right. Primary commodity, appetite, gemstone. For a rock hound, that should raise your radar. Now, it does have in this description had the access how to get in there and what you might find so in this case southwest corner of the lot are several pits and an audit which are overgrown with vegetation it tells you the direction of the audit you know blah 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 but there is some really nice information there 
little bit of, here ha this happens to have some mining history from 1900 appetite crystals that would raise my curiosity and they did some other types of surveys in the area because they were looking in this case for uranium and then they're stripping sampling trenching all interesting stuff further down here's what's really nice the rock types pegmatite so well you can read this as easy as I can even more information but here's here's what I focus on under mineralization what exactly if I haven't been to the area can I expect to find in this case appetite with calcite one and one hornblende mica proxene you know titanite you can keep going through <laughs> almost any one of these would would make me very interested in the spot and then other comments red and green appetite masses up to one meter across wow and then more links that you can click on but let's go back up to one of these earlier links we'll look at this mine we'll look at a couple others because this is really really cool stuff so if I wanted to see what the assessment work that's on file says I can click on these as well and then drill down even further This one doesn't appear to have much info. Oh well. But, oh, wait a sec. It's got a file here, so I'll drill down even further. If I can. There we go. Right. So, you can see October 1979, they filed this report. You would probably find, be able to find this report other ways. Let me just make this a bit smaller so I can get over and find it. So these are online. You could probably find it with a Google search if you knew the right question to ask Google. But here it all is. Just drill down, like peeling back the layers of an onion to find information. Now as a rock hound, what you really want to do is read between the lines. So in this case they talk about how they got the information that they're using here, what they were looking for, what types of prospecting they were doing. Yeah, blah 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 blah. As a rock hound I find it mildly interesting. Well, I like the, the techno technological things, but really, you don't need to, to drill down on that. But it did say there was a radiometric plan. Hmm, because they're looking for uranium and thorium. Any place there's uranium and thorium, you can find other good crystals as well, normally. So here we go. And what their counts were. So you can just all kinds of information more for a geologist but again for a rock hound read between the lines and there are certain things that will jump out at you as oh that's interesting so what else do we have here I haven't seen this report so I'm reading reading it for the first time as are you um, Sometimes the recommendations are interesting because they summarize what's going on. This uh, uranium homology, uh, so they say, okay, more study, they always say that. We should spend some more money and study this a lot more. <laughs> That's the way to keep geologists employed. Okay. Now, this is what I do like to see. They have maps. 
and so you can so we've got now the Google Earth map which we can drill down on but don't completely trust where they say the mine was sometimes what you want to do is cross reference these which are hand drawn or computer drawn to see what they say and where they did their study you may find they don't match up completely especially once you get into the older surveys they didn't have good GPS that they do now and the points are really taken with a reference to the structures that they are seeing, the geological structures from the topo maps. So, you know, here, I'm not going to go through this one because it's only one example. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but you can see there is a heck of a lot of information here. If you're going to go use this information, I would especially pay attention to what they put onto their topo maps. That's what they're using back then. I wouldn't completely trust the GPS coordinates. At least that has been my experience. On more recent surveys, absolutely. But more recent being, you know, maybe the last 10 years. So, that was cool. I think we can cancel out of this. Oh, <laughs> let me go back in. All right, so to get out of this, there is a nice link up here back to Google Earth. Here we go. The horses seem a little spooked to you. They're horses. They get spooked by their own shadows. Oh. oh, who goes there? Oh. <laughs> there is something out there. Do you think I'm an idiot? Brothers! So I've used this on both Windows-based machines, and this one happens to be an Apple. It works well on both. If it does happen to freeze up on you, just back out go back in really interesting thing to explore for any of us armchair pro armchair prospectors so cheers just rock and roll through it because we're rocking and a rolling rocking and a reeling by Barantz ba 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 Barantz <laughs> that's because I had two glasses of wine while showing this to you so hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.